Well, Governor, thank you for taking the time to sit down for this AP interview. Uh, since we're in Washington, I want to start with uh, 2024. You've made it clear that you were thinking about running for president. Uh, have, have you made a decision yet? Uh, I've not made a decision yet, uh, but it's even accelerated the decision making after the midterm elections in terms of uh, the interest, in terms of the motivation. Uh, the midterm elections uh, made it clear to me that the GOP uh, needs a bold agenda, but also new voices that's articulating what our party stands for, the direction we want to take our country. So uh, very serious about it, uh, but no decision has been made. As a matter of days, weeks, months, kind of what are we looking at here for you to get closer to it? Well, it should be in the first quarter of next year uh, because... Uh, again, we have candidates in there. I expect more candidates to get in. Uh, I, you know, have, have don't have the highest national profile of everybody that's looking at it. And so, you know, you've got to allow time if you do decide to do it to uh, build the base of support that's needed. If Trump uh, wins the nomination, do you think he could beat Biden? Well, anything can happen. Uh, but that's the, that's the really the worst scenario. That's that's almost the uh, scenario that Biden wishes for. That's probably how he got elected the first time. It became, you know, a binary choice for the American people between uh, the uh, challenges that we saw uh, in the Trump uh, presidency, particularly the closing days, versus Biden, who uh, uh, he made it that choice. And so that's not a choice we want again. What do you think the midterm elections say about where the party is and, and where it's going? Well, it says that we got to start winning again. Uh, whenever you look at uh, the elections ever since President Trump got elected, we have not had a winning cycle uh, and we have not met expectations as well. Now, I think it is important to put the last midterm election in context uh, that uh, what we saw is that the electorate was not rejecting Republican ideas and values and solutions. Now, they were rejecting specific candidates. Uh, you talked about Trump, wanted to see what you thought about his, his statement recently where he had uh, you know, called for terminating parts of the Constitution to overturn the, uh, the results of the 2020 election. Well, I've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution for three different uh, major offices. And, uh, and so uh, I, I believe in the Constitution. I've sworn to uphold the Constitution, and I intend to continue to do that. Uh, I'm a rule of law guy. Uh, that's the Republican principles. It's our country's principles. And I yearn for the day that uh, uh, we, potential candidates and public leaders on the Republican side do not have to respond to every latest uh, rumination of the former president. You've said before you're not going to support Trump. Uh, does that include if, if he's the nominee, would, are you not going to support him? We're, we're not going to address that. I mean, I've said very clearly I've, I think the Republican Party ought to go a different direction. I'm going to work hard to make sure there's the right choices in there and that we make the right selection. And so uh, I think it's time to move on, and, uh, and, and I think there's many that will join in that effort. You've also... You've advocated for and championed some culture wars issues. You've signed a number of abortion bans and restrictions since taking office. How do you define that restraint or that path on it? Well, the key thing is for Republicans and conservatives is to think about it. Let's not instinctively say, well, let's use the power of government to accomplish our social agenda or our cultural agenda. You know, our first response is, Let's strengthen the home. Let's strengthen the families and the communities and our churches and synagogues. Let's strengthen those because that's the greatest impact on our culture. Uh, and, and there's a limited amount that government can or should do. But whenever it becomes, for example, to the issues of saving unborn children, you know, that's, uh, those are relevant, uh, important areas that the government should be able to regulate and to use its power to save lives. Next, next month you're going, to, you're going to be leaving office. Sarah Huckabee Sanders will be the next governor of Arkansas. Uh, kind of preparing for that, what kind of advice have you given her about becoming governor? You know, I, I haven't given her any advice. Uh, I've been there uh, available for answering questions, helping in the transition. We have a great relationship. But I love her agenda, you know, which is to 
increase literacy, uh, the reading program in the schools, uh, to uh, focus on uh, the issues of crime and public safety. Uh, so hats off to her on that agenda. I think she's doing a great job in the transition, putting her team in place, and uh, I'm there to back her up and uh, support it. And uh, uh, But uh, she's got plenty of advice, but she's also got her own great instincts.